All right, everybody, what's up? It's actually Electro Saturday today. Nice to see the chat is happening. Ben Colts, I believe, is number one today. We got Martin Crockett. Here's a new one, fat fan of music. What's up? And Caroline Colpani, hello. More new names, great. Reefer bass, refer bass, something like that. Sean Hodgson, Acid Bat, Skirmantis, Peter Al- Peteritis. Oh my God. <laughs> this is what I get myself into by starting to read off all the names of the chat at the beginning of the show. Kobanya 3000, Josh Holiday, Jasper Swillens, Swillens, Swillens. Where are you from? Let's see who else we got. Aaron 303. We got Lie Society. And Luminous Cloud. Ayo. Me meme. Very nice. Neo traditional Spain. Welcome. Minister Mitch. Welcome as well. And Stereo Decor from Georgia. What's up, y'all? Here we are on another techno now actually today electro saturdays honestly i decided at the last minute i'm pretty transparent with you guys when i'm like when i when i'm planning ahead and i've got a guest or like i'm featuring a plug-in or whatever like and i'm prepared sometimes life gets in the way and i just walk in here and like well let's just see how it goes <laughs> so yeah it's electro today and um i'm playing around with a plug-in a new plug-in that i got that was sent to me and it's pretty dirty and raunchy so yeah that's what's happening. This is, uh, as you know, 343 TV brought to you by 343 Labs Music Production School here in New York, in Berlin, and in cyberspace. Yes, I'm in cyberspace right now. You can see that. Let's see what happens. Can I make this even more cyberspacey? That's kind of cyberspacey. I love playing with this thing. This, this uh, Sleepy Circuits Hypno modular video synthesizer is just so distracting. Oh my gosh. I usually don't play with it while I'm talking, but I just just wanted to point it out today that I just love this thing. It's so cool. Look this up if you're into like cool toys to play with that and it's reactive like you can send it CV control and MIDI control. Um so you, and it's got modulation built into it. It's so much fun. I love it. Anyway, that was a nice digression. My I think I'm a little ADD today. Can you tell? Right, I'm going from oh, I'm doing a plug-in to oh, I don't know what I'm doing today to hey, it's three four three <laughs> labs music production school back on track. We've got all sorts of stuff happening lately. We've been doing like a, an event every week. We just had a uh, a performance showcase, kind of like an open mic for 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 the community, mainly students, but you know people who are here and active in the community and making music and are performing. And uh, um, I, I went to the first one. I didn't make this one, but by all accounts, it went great. So it's really, you know, the community here it is growing and evolving constantly, and this is part of it. So you guys hanging out in the chat every week, and to, and also to those of you who are new here, you know, welcome, of course. But yeah, this is part of what we do. We're music education, music production, composition, arranging. I do synthesis and sound design most of the time, but I also do Ableton Live classes sometimes too. Um, we work with Ableton Live. We work with Logic. Uh, we do. We have live performance stuff. Like I mean, it's just we're growing all the time, developing new programs, new ideas. I do a uh, a techno online course. It's a short, sort of intensive, learning how to make techno. If you're if it's something that you're new to, um, that's. We're, we're, I don't know if Thomas is in the chat or or Max is in the chat today, but. Um, yeah, I think we're we're going to have another making techno course coming up. I should do a making electro course too. What do you think? Hmm. It's in the cards, more genre specific uh, online courses. So, if you want to know more about that or just stay in in tune with, you know, what we're doing and things that are coming up, uh definitely subscribe here. Check out our information on our websites. You know, we are, are uh, the links are all down below. You can join our Discord. Um of course, I promised last week we were going to follow up with feedback for those of you we didn't get to on the stream. Apologies. It's coming. Um, hang tight. And, you know, that's generally the Discord channel. I have like a Selway feedback channel there. That's generally when we do these, uh, when I have guests in and we do feedback sessions, that's where you submit. 
your work. So if you want to get into that and uh, get the news, so to speak, join our Discord and, you know, maybe sign up for our email list on our website. And I think that's enough messing around with the due diligence at the top of the at the top of the uh, hour. Let's see what's going on. Who else is in the, the chat that's new? We've got Denis Shinkevich from Belarus. Actually, maybe you've been here before. And uh, let's see. Any, any news going on? Sean Hodson is sharing that Plugin Alliance has a massive sale going on. Yeah, Plugin Alliance has some amazing plugins, so that, that's worth a look. Um, I'm not sure if it's still going on, but uh, Samples from Mars had their, like, download all their samples for some, like, ridiculously low price. Uh, that might be worth looking into as well. It's a pretty good deal. And um, hello, AW. Um, nice suggestion here. Could you talk a little bit about how to make a track in a Marco Corolla style? Well, do you mean old school techno Mar Marco Corolla or do you mean more kind of modern, groovy, housey Marco Corolla? <laughs> um, I could probably do a better job at looking at the classic kind of more 90s techno stuff. But yeah, thanks for that question. And yeah, every now and then I'll do something with a particular producer or, you know, genre in mind, subgenres. Um, so yeah, cool. And that is true, as Luminous Clown points out, uh, not clown. What did I just say, clown? Luminous Cloud points out Corolla has many styles, right? I mean, I have to say my favorite stuff is like his early, early releases, early year releases, 90s into 2000s. Those are my favorite Marco Corolla. That's my favorite Marco Corolla era. Cool. All right. So I mentioned I got a new plugin that I've been playing around with. Um, and uh, where is this thing? It looks kind of trippy. There it is. This is um, the car Carbonizator. And, uh, you know, this is actually uh, brought out by Carbone Records. This guy, D Davide Carbone, he reached out to me uh, on, and sent me a message and offered to send me the plugin. And I've, and I've looked at his, um, his stuff before they have another plugin and, oh my God, my brain, it's a, it's a, dr it's like, um, a, a drum synth. It's a, it's a, a recreation of, okay, my brain just completely spaced out on the name of that. But yeah, one of the electro, uh, one of the electro, uh, Saturdays and some months ago we looked at that synth and it was pretty cool. So that drum synth. So, you know, it was nice of him to uh, reach out and send this, uh, this particular carbonizator, which is, it's a pretty intense distortion effect with some built-in uh, modulation, right? So, and, and tube emulation, it looks like. It's got valves, different types of valves in it. And I don't know, the interface, it's like spray painted neon smiley face. <laughs> so I think just like you can tell from the, the, the design of this, what the vibe is going to be a little bit like it's a little raunchy and a little silly and ravey. And, uh, you know, it's, it's a fun little uh, processor to play around with. So that's part of it, right? I'm playing around with this plugin to see what it can do. And then, you know, this kind of effect is something that, you can use on like, you know, you want to make like hardcore, heavy duty, ravey kick drums. It's good for that. It's good for just destroying this, you know, any kind of distortion, right? But like, it seems like this one's designed with like aggressive, ravey, noisy stuff in mind, right? So that's kind of, and then I thought, all right, let's do an electro, let's start an electro track that is a little bit heavier, right? A little dirty, a little grindy a little ravey, maybe even a little breaky. I was playing around with some break beats to see how this thing sounds on, on drum loops. So, uh, yeah, I love it. Neo traditional Spain says, let's destroy sounds that that is, this thing is good for that. Cool. So let's get over into Ableton live and, you know, I said earlier, I came into today, not exactly, uh, sure how today was going to go. And this is a sketch that I just, this just literally happened right before I, I started streaming. So this is just in the early stages. Um, all right, let's hear a little bit of what it sounds like so far. Um, cross your fingers, it still sounds okay. Oy, oy, oy. Um, did you hear that? I didn't hear that. I think I may have uh, missed a mixer setting. Let's make sure that I can hear what I'm doing so I know what I'm talking about. 
Here we go. Ableton monitor is muted. Oh my God. There we go. Now you can see it. David Curtis, please play nice. Play some music and shut up. Okay, I won't say anything more. All right, so this is what's going on. I mean, this is pretty much right. That's what the <laughs> that's what the carbonizer is doing, right? I've just got this simple, you know, Ableton Live drum sense kit going on. And it's okay, right? But then this is this is what we're doing with the car carbonizer. So we're like, you know, tube saturating the the crap out of the sound. So it's nice. It's warm. It's fuzzy. It's dirty. But. It doesn't get, it, at least until you get into the modulation, it doesn't get that, that much more dirty than this. I mean, there's some extra resonance, like this is going to kind of push into that saturation a little bit more. I'm noticing, I'm noticing, this is a new plug and I'm noticing that there are some little bugs. It, you know, hopefully, like we, it was having a few audio glitches when I was trying it out earlier, and you'll notice when I turn this knob all the way, it won't let me go up past, I don't know, one o'clock. Like it's, maybe I need to reload the plugin. So there could be some, you know, user interface things to, to look at for these guys. But so far so good in how it sounds. If I wanted to like drive this even harder, I'd need to like kind of clip into it. Right, but you can hear that's, it, you know, it's, it kind of lets you really push hard into it. Right, but to get this more insane, I mean, and this already sounds good if that's what you want. If you want that big, thick, warm, kind of fat tube saturated sound on, on, on a bass or a kick drum. Um, let's try another one of the valves. All right, much different, right? This one's like, where'd all the bass go? Interesting. What happens if I push the resonance? Hmm. All right, there's got to be something to, to do to make that more dirty. All right, and this is another nice one. This one's really solid. There's more sub in this one. Now, Josh Holiday just pointed out, create a chain and mix dry wet. You know, looking at this as a little bit of a plug-in overview review, you're absolutely right. Like a dry wet control in this would be a really good idea a lot you know most modern kind of distortion saturator effects have some way to blend in the the dry signal um we can make one ourselves definitely not a new trick but in case you're new to live and you're still learning about this kind of stuff i can take a plugin that needs a dry wet that doesn't have one and make one by putting it in a rack right and we'll call that chain my wet chain, right? And then I can create another chain that's dry, right? So now let's say I go back to that less bassy, more mid-rangey kind of resonant valve sound. Right now I can balance the unprocessed and the processed, right? So that is definitely a way to handle it. Um, and, if, and then you can get fancy. You can go in and have a macro and make a... a a wet dry balance i'm just going to keep it simple for right now all right actually let's just ungroup that or not okay so let's see what else this thing can do we've got am amount so amplitude modulation right so this is going to modulate the volume up and down and uh it's not labeled but there's two types i'm guessing that i'm not sure what that does we'll have to listen and see and then we've got speed but basically there's an lfo modulating the amplitude of the distortion oy 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 and right away it's stereo so there's definitely stereo offset All right, so that's the amount, the amplitude of modulation, and then we got, whoa. All right, 
that we're getting in the, that's really low frequency modulation now we're getting higher and the higher we go we're going to hear more ringy metallic dirty crazy stuff that's insane it's cool there's like this it's doing left and right phase offset so it's ma making it sound super wide now i noticed when i was playing around with this a little bit earlier sometimes it cancels sometimes i'm not exactly sure how it, you, i got it a certain combination of amplitude amount and rate or speed and then it sounded like weird and phasey and like and then i, I tested it in, 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 in mono and like it disappeared so that's something you want to be careful with and when you do a really wide stereo phase modulation like that on something, what if I put a, if I make this mono, we'll put this after the plug-in. All right, that's okay. And it's going to sound totally different in mono. Whoa. All right, thankfully not canceling now. It happened before sort of randomly. Maybe it'll happen randomly again. But I really like it. I like this kind of dirty stuff. Now, I, sometimes I'll make these kinds of things myself with uh, live devices. I'll combine like saturation and overdrive and I'll put stereo modulation on it. But, you know, this is a... Uh, this has got its own kind of weird, dirty, twisted character going on, and you can just slap it on there and get crazy. Um, a little bit over, a little. I like the sound of that. Using this as like a kick slash bass line kind of situation. I like it, but it's already like messy too. And like, it sounds cool when you get the rate at just the right sort of polymetric sort of out of sync feel. It'd be nice if we could be precise and sync the LFO. That would be cool. Um, that's something that would be good to add to a plugin like this. You could do rhythmic patterns, right? So it doesn't go, get out of sync with your, uh, with your BPM. But I also like it being a little weird and floaty and going in and out of time. Now it's I'm hearing it cancel sometimes. I like this. Just switching between those different tones is kind of cool. Because there's some kind of like, it's a little bit, a little bit unpredictable. This might be a good candidate for doing some resampling, like capturing audio and then chopping it up. This other AM type is weird. It sounds like really clicky. This is the one that sounds a little bit more out of phase to me. More dirty too, more dirty and clicky. It sounds good faster, like higher rate. It's hard to make it sound smooth though, because that crackling. guessing it sounds like when the position's down it's a triangle or a sine wave and when the pos position's up and you hear that crackle kind of sound i think that's must be a sawtooth wave that's probably it's sounding more but then i'm also hearing like a stereo phase difference so it'd be interesting to know like what they did under the hood because it, it, it's not clear right we can just only go by what we hear uh at this point okay I think at this point, what I liked the best was when I had the amplitude low. And 
it was kind of doing that rolling. Let's see if I can get it back. There it is. less of a, an amount and now it's sort of more subtle in the background it sounds more like a kick with some weird floaty stereo fuzzy things going around it and then if I bring up the amount it becomes more sustained okay what else do we got that's the other kick right and that's one of the things I was doing with this I was thinking all right I'm turning this kick drum into a bass sound basically it's like a droning bass note and that's cool but it becomes less of a kick and it doesn't have the same energy and I wanted something punchy so I added another shorter less well I don't think I processed this one externally at all it's just the built in there's a little bit of overdrive and saturation built into the to the the DS kick so it's already kind of nice and tight and compressed sounding just straight out and then combining that with this. I'm gonna make sure that I'm gonna, I, I, I still on this, yeah, I'm putting wide stereo effects on a low frequency sound. I wanna make sure that uh, it sounds okay in mono. It's got a weird little phasey kind of comb filtering thing going on. It seems to kind of it kind of holds up in stereo in mono. So let's see what else we've got. That's the amplitude modulation, and that's a lot of the craziness of this effect is doing the amplitude modulation combined with the tube distortion. Um, but we also have filters. Right? And that low pass, it sounds like it's bit before the valve, right? Because it's not cutting the high frequencies out of the distortion. It's just... There we go. Let's see what this sounds like if I get rid of the amplitude modulation. Huh. There it is. Yeah, I still think there's some there's some uh, control uh, interface issues. Th this plugin's just a little buggy, right? Because like, look at that. It's going from zero to like loud, right there. Yeah, I might have to re. Uh, might have to uh, reload this plugin because <laughs> it is not behaving. Yeah, let's try that. Let's see. What, let's see. Let's get rid of this and go load this plugin up again and make sure that it is working properly. All right. So we're going to grab that, drag it in. There we go. No, it's still, it's behaving strangely. Let's see what happens if we play around with the LFO type and uh, amount and speed. Nope. Yeah. That's disappointing. Or does it only apply to what the AM modulation is doing. Aha! All right, see, I'm discovering something. So the filter 
is it was working, but it's not working on the dry signal. It's working just on the saturated stuff. At least that's what it sounds like. And that sounds cool. All right, so in the same way we've got like amplitude modulation, now we've got filter modulation, and we can go into the audio range, right? Like, let's try it with a slow rate. You can hear the wobble up and down. And we get into the audio rate and we start to get a little more complexity because of the sidebands being created. We build up that resonance a little bit. You start hearing kind of like slightly metallic, edgy kind of stuff. Let's hear how that sounds with the beat, right? It's a little less heavy now. It's more trippy, kind of. I missed the bass, though. Let's see if I can get it back. All oh, right, I'm on the I'm on the more mid rangey bright too. Whoa. But maybe I like it less resonance. Okay. Let's see what the high pass does for us. Well. Wow. Now that is definitely before definitely before it's hitting the valve because all those overtones are going away when we lose that low frequency but then if I drive the resonance into the valve wish there was like a way to increase the volume going in sounds kind of cool Right, so yeah, doing that, like having the resonance way up on the high pass filter, it's doing something a little bit like what this resonance, extra resonance knob is doing up here. All right. All right, we've been listening to a droning, thick, weird, heavy kick drum for 20 something minutes now. <laughs> Let's take a little break on our ears for a second and uh, let's hang out with the chat a little bit. We're at the halfway point on Tech Electro Saturdays today. This is uh, 343 TV brought to you by 343 Labs. And uh, yeah, let's go in and look at what the chat is saying. So Stereo Decor says, let's ask John to listen a bit to dry kick or snare Something is wrong. I clearly hear a very short delay on every sound, but not on his voice. I know what that is. You're right. There's So you'll notice I'm not wearing headphones, right? I have my monitors on, and the mic is picking up a little bit. So there's some comb filtering and a little bit of a delay because the mic is picking up the uh the speakers i mean if i turn my monitors down a little bit that'll get better um most of the time it's not a problem usually you know because the mic and the output of the, the of my daw it's going into a mixer and they are there's no there's no computer buffering there's no extra delay um they should be phase aligned like what's coming out of the speakers and what's coming out of the daw directly into the stream should be exactly like 0 milliseconds there shouldn't be no, shouldn't be a an echo, but it could be just because I'm banging it out in here that the, since the speakers are a little bit loud, that's what you're hearing. So sorry about that, but that's that would explain it. It's not necessarily something wrong, but yeah, it's not it's not in the sounds that I'm making or playing with in the DAW. It's a result of how the audio signals routed into the live stream. Cool, but thanks for pointing that out. Let's see. Hey Doug, nice to see you here. Doug Smith is saying, I'm addicted to weird delays. Oh, yeah, there's the plug-in of the Erica Synth Zen delay. Dude, I got to get that. That looks great. I think they've got it. Do they still have their introductory pricing? Because I want to grab it before the price goes up. Because I, I always was intrigued by the hardware. But, um, yeah, I will definitely grab a plug-in because I'm so, I'm so much more in the box, right? Um, cool. Noncompliant says it's 99 now. That's, that's good. That might just be worth it. It's a really cool effect. 
Nice. Thanks for that reminder, Doug. And hey, James, glad to have you here. Very cool. Now, what is this? From non-compliance saying, Electro is just a techno variant to me. I don't disagree with that. For me, it's all part of the same universe. Different vibes, though, right? And you, But you can totally go one way or the other. You can be more electro, and, or you can be electro and a little bit of techno, or you can be techno and a little bit of electro, or you, you know what I mean? It's a continuum. I, I definitely like, you know, like many of the variations of techno and electro and other genres. I like when you mix electro and breaks and bass music. Um, maybe not so much electro and house, at least on the commercial side. That's the thing. The genre of electro house definitely, like the idea of that, of like, House music with futuristic electro vibes could be cool, but when you go on Beatport and go to the electro house section, it's not what I want to listen to for the most part. So you got to be careful with that. <laughs> but uh, anyway, what else are you guys talking about? Mooger Fugers, Big Sky. You guys are talking about hardware effects. I know it's so expensive, and it is kind of weird when plug-in effects cost almost as much as like effects pedals. You wonder, like, really? But I feel like $99 for something unique like the Zendelay sounds worth it to me. I've definitely spent more than that on a plug-in before. Whether that was a good idea or not, I don't know. Very nice. Cool. Um, let's, let's get back a little bit to the music. Uh, and let's maybe not just focus on this droning kick drum. Let's see what we can do with some other sounds. And... Uh... <laughs> Right, so you know we've got this second carry kick drum, which is just actually the main kick drum, right? I threw in, I haven't shaped this sound yet. This is the DS clap. You know, and this is pretty typical analog clap synth, right? It sounds pretty good. Could be a little brighter, maybe. That sloppy control you know, is kind of emulating multiple claps hitting, like in real life. But if we want it to be tighter, we can re reduce that. That's the spread. That's the tone. It's filtering, basically. I like it a little shinier, a little brighter. And then, right, decay, we're hearing a longer uh, amp envelope, and we're hearing noise sounding a little bit more like reverb, I guess. And that's the level of the tail. Actually, I kind of like it without the tail. That's more, like, sharp, right? Dare I put the crazy distortion on this thing? Let's see what happens. Oh, right away it's darker. That's interesting. Let's bring the, yeah. So it's not a very, not a very, it sounds like this is already like rolled off. Like putting this on a bright sound, it's sounding less shiny. I mean, I'm guessing that's by design. Let's see if I can, oh. The intensity helps brighten it up a little bit. What happens if we high pass it? All right. That helps, right? But it's still like whatever sizzle is gone from this. So that's interesting to know about this. Like this, this plugin has a dark sound to it. It's it sounds like it's deliberately rolling off the ultra highs. It could also depend on the valve. No. Does it even make sense to amplitude modulate a clap? Turning it, it sounds like a, a a cheap sort of synth synthesized snare drum now with the with the amplitude modulation creating a, a sine wave kind of resonance in it. This is definitely where I want to dry wet. I want to be able to like mix in that with the character of the distortion. All right, so let, let's do that. Like what we were talking about before, we're gonna have two chains. Yeah. We'll mix them together. Whether this sound really needs this or not, I don't know. We're experimenting and trying out a new plugin to see how it sounds. Yeah, it does sound a little bit more like an acoustic snare now somehow. But I'm okay with that because I'm doing this kind of breakbeat electro kind of vibe and I, and I was kind of 
playing up on that a little bit. Like, like I have this in the background. Oh wait, maybe we should be on the main screen so you can see better what I'm doing. All right, so let's, again, we're gonna try this on the plugin. I mean, try this plugin on the drum loop. There it is. All right. See, I forgot to check this on the clap. Having this extra resonance knob down is definitely rolling off some stuff. Here's where the high end gets. This is where it is. So, yeah, it's more than just resonance. This is changing some other thing. It's so, it, I just... I, don't, I like the sound of this just as like a, a tube saturator as something to warm up and crisp up a sound now that we've figured out where the high end was hiding. Here's where like a synced LFO would come in handy. I'm kind of trying to beat match it, but it's always going to slide out of time. But that would sound cool if it was doing like 16th notes or 8th notes. Just giving it a little bit of movement. Sounds a little late. What happens if I get rid of this? Yeah, it's like having it out of sync like that. It's a little weird. But when when it's when the LFO rate is just right, it's cool. Okay. That's what it sounds like on the on the drum loop. I like it. This is so clean sounding now. All right, I messed up the kick. The kick sounded way better at the top of the show. I'm going to have to go back and figure that out. All right. And then I was talking before about acoustic snare. That's what I was trying to do with this physical model. This is emulating a... Sounds like nothing, right? It sounds like a, a a clean concert snare far away from the mic, but then you put this on it and it, it's like... So what I did with this snare is similar to what I was doing with that clap, right? Just adding like overtones, harmonics, complexity. And I kind of, it still sounds like an acoustic drum, but it's got that fuzz on it. It's got that kind of shininess on it. I'm not completely sold on the drum loop. I still want to go back and see what I'm going to do with that. I'm just going to leave it in the background and not distort it. All right, this is just a sample that I randomly picked out. Well, semi-randomly. I like the sound of it. It's got that kind of comb-filtered tone to it. 808, closed hi-hats. All right. And I decided to go for this kind of real short computery square wave sequence. Let's lose the breakbeat. More electro like this, right? We've gone over this many times before. I, this is sort of my default go-to quick 
step sequencer just for doing 16th note patterns like this i'll generally do a random thing this time i didn't though this time i like uh, i picked out a couple of specific notes um i'm gonna save that pattern let's go to pattern two and try this again that's cool too what's the sound doing why does it sound like that yeah it is one square wave right and you can hear it it sounds even more sort of video game like that but then going in throwing the lfo on and it's on re-trigger so it's re it's starting at the same phase position every time a note plays and then here the lfo is modulating the pulse width a little bit If I slow that rate down, it will sound more straight again. You can also offset the phase. Yeah, it doesn't change that much. It's going too fast to really notice the difference. Let's slow it down. There it goes. But I kind of like it fast. It sounds like it's like really just vibrating in like electrical right and then i've got uh the note duration to make it sound really tight so the envelope in the synth is basically almost zero oops five milliseconds really super tight if i wanted that to sound even sharper i could use a high pass filter weird there it goes I turn the envelope mod off that sounds cool too playing around with the resonance and the filter frequency of that high pass filter well, let's go back to low pass I want some low frequencies in there and then it was back to the uh, to the pitch to create a. Oh, actually, that was kind of cool. All right. Also, I want to get the reset the transport so it starts on the same beat every time. If that's off, it'll just continue where the sequence left off. Well, so I'll start and then stop, and then when I start again, it won't be the first beat of the sequence. So I want that to be sync and now it'll the first beat of the clock is the first step of the sequence okay that's a nice simple very electro melody right we got a, a minor second and a, a third Give it a little bit of variation. And I'm doing a, an octave transposition, but then now this sequence is two steps shorter. So you're gonna hear different notes transposing to create an ev evolving mod uh, change in that melody. We could play around with duration too if we want. That's okay. What happens if we take this out of sync? Maybe not. I like these kind of beats that are this driving and, you know, kind of banging. I don't want to do too much of that hypnotic techno, out of sync, out of time stuff. I kind of want it to be more straight. So I'm not, I'm not going, I'm going to have it have a regular, have this one at least be a more regular variation. You know, this is the same kind of stuff you should do to your hi-hats to give them groove. Um. 
What will this sound like an octave lower? That's good. Will it work with the big dirty kick drum? Let's see. It will. It'll work. I gotta get that sound better again. Let's play with it a little bit. Aha! That's what I'm messing it up. I forgot about the high pass thing I was doing. Alright, I need to hear this by itself real quick. And we'll fix this again and get that cool sort of buzzy modulation thing that was happening earlier. Right, where it was less sustained, it was more modulating a little bit. There it is. I had it too fast. All right, I'm going to go back and play with the high pass filter a little bit. Yeah, maybe not. What happens if we play with the kick drum while it's going into this? It's like... Maybe that's good for like the beginning of the track so it's not full on. And then later, can increase that. Send a saturated, distorted signal into that. All right, really ridiculous. Got to be careful with that. All right, I like that synth pattern low like that but I don't like it with it's too muddy with the kick but then if we do I could have the sequence go up an octave when the low bass dirty bass comes in I'm kind of I don't now that I got rid of the drum <laughs> the drum loop while we were listening into it and making it sound more electro i think i like it better without the drum loop we're gonna we're gonna x x out that for this track for this uh sketch that i'm just starting here how's how, let's see how this more acoustic sounding snare is doing i don't mind that like that i think it's okay to have like an acoustic sounding snare in an electro track as long as it's mixed in and has the right energy and i think this one pretty much does All right, we should try the distortion on this thing too. Let's see. I mean, usually you put high frequency sounds into the distortion and it just gets bright and noisy. That's probably what's going to happen. It's the low frequency sounds that you hear more of the detail. Um, but anyway, we're trying out a new plugin. Let's see what it does. All right, we want it to be bright. It's going to bring the resonance up. Interesting. Like, all right, so that's really crushing it like crazy somehow. And it's even adding like low frequency noise to it. Maybe this is where we need to do the high pass filter. Well, that sounds great. That sounds like a phaser. And that really, that's interesting. I mean, it sounds all like sharp and kind of nasal and resonant now. It's super, superly, like superly. It super cuts through the mix now. What is wrong with my vocabulary today? <laughs> That's okay too. It's even more resonant. 
What happens if you do the amplitude modulation on this thing? It's probably going to be really bright and ringy. Or, or crunched, crunched up. Interesting. That's not what I expected. The stereo spread on that's pretty crazy. Filter up like this. Whoa. All right. My ears need a break. It's making really intense, fast, distorted beats. I mean, and this isn't even hardcore. This isn't even like really hard, but it does wear on you a little bit. And so I'm I'm happy to have a little bit of a chill time. Let's let's hang out a minute and see who else has joined the chat. If anyone else is here, we've got. Oh hey, Silver Knobs is back. He is he is late. No worries. Glad that you're here. And. Doug Smith is saying, is it wrong that I'd really like a physical version of this carbonizer? Carbonizer? Is it carbonizer or carbonizer? Carbonizer. <laughs> I mean, I think there are distortion effects out there that have modulation in them that do similar things to this. I mean, maybe some of you guys know some examples of, of hardware distortion. Um, cool. Luminous Cloud had a good suggestion for the sequence. Randomization on duration. Let's listen to that real quick. I like that idea. I mean, it sounded good. I like with just the, uh, you know, the more uh, repetitive on the, uh, where it's doing the same on the duration, like every bar. But, all right, I know I was saying I wanted to keep it kind of square, but let's, let's take that. Let's see what happens if we randomize it. You're on to something. Right, and you know, that's they're all really long now. And and some of them are like super short or like they're not even there anymore. So like if you if you bring the duration down to zero, it doesn't play. That's interesting. So if I want to keep them in there, I need to like go back and put a note. So I still have that dit -dit 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 in the background, which I like. That's not terrible, that idea. It could have variations. Uh, uh, so sometimes it could be tight, and sometimes it could be random. Or I could just do this. Just randomly myself, just pick a few to, to change. So yeah, that was a good suggestion. Cool. Um... Non-compliant is also agreeing with having the, the synth pattern and a higher octave separated more from the low bass, definitely. But I would do both in an arrangement. I would have it switch back and forth in different sections. And I'm really glad that it's making you hype. I see that comment here. That's pretty cool. Um, and yeah, Doug, you're you you saying that the acoustic snare can take things into the electro breaks vibe rather than pure electro, at least in my world. And I agree. I am trying to ride the line here. And that's why like, I, I had the break beat in there, but like that was too far into breaks. Whereas I'm okay with just the snare giving it that breaky vibe. And then the rest of it is really sharp and electronic sounding. I'm cool with that. Nice. All right. So... I guess let's just check this out one more time before we wrap things up. 
Oh, here's another one. Add some delay to the distorted pattern. Silver Knobs is suggesting. Are you are you talking about that buzzy synth lead that uh, that we're playing with? Add some delay or reverb, some space to that. Let's try that out for sure. Okay. Right, well, I'm gonna go back. I'm gonna go back and have this uh, more tight. Right. I'm gonna go back down to that. I forgot what they were. It's something like this. Something like that. Right, and it sounds really it's so different with the crazy distortion and the filtering on it. I like this one better because it's got that cool phase going on with the filter. Let's try it. I'm just going to throw an echo on there I'm, I'm, or I don't know can we find a, a fancy plugin to try let's do an, an Arturia something what do we got Arturia where's the um, eternity or the tape delay like the, the the Roland style one and then there's also the bucket brigade one let's try eternity that's going to be a little bit more modern and spacey hold your ah, there we go and we'll just try some presets. One of these is going to sound cool. Some modulation on the feedback. That's hot. We'll see what happens if I put that before the distortion. It's just gonna get it louder. That's dirty. Might be a little too dirty. Oh, this is something to always keep in mind when you're working with heavy distortion is like controlling what is getting more or less distorted with EQs, right? Right, so this, this sound coming out of the synth has all this really super low frequency stuff we can't even hear, but it is triggering the distortion. So I think we can clean this up and get it a little bit more intense if I cut that out. And if I want to, like, make it clip more on the lower frequencies, I can boost those. So this is something that I, I often do when I'm working with a lot of distortion is I'll use filters and EQs to be really careful about getting the tone out of this, the distortion that I want. That said, I still think this was a bad idea to put the delay in front of the carbonizator. Yeah, that's better. And if I want this to sound brighter and more intense, I'll probably like put a compressor or even a saturator after this to like get it. I don't know. Let's just try it real quick. Come on, zoom in. There we go. Sounds really cool. I do peak, peak uh, co uh, compression. I'm, gonna turn, I'm not gonna use the makeup gain. I'm just gonna turn it up. That flap sounds a little s soft now. Exposing the sequence of the keyboard now. Oops. All right. I think we're getting there. I mean, this is really intense. It it needs more. It needs some polish. It needs some work. It needs some other parts to create more variation. But uh, yeah, I had fun trying out this new plugin. I think, you know, not bad, right? It's got character. It's unique. And, you know, I will definitely use this sometimes when I want to get a little dirty and, and freaky with some sounds. So 
Thanks again to Davide for sharing this with me today. And um, yeah, it was really nice. Thanks to everybody for hanging out for this hour of somewhat aggressive electro sounds. <laughs> and uh, uh, I guess that's it for today. Thanks to everyone in the chat and uh, see you next time. Never dies. <laughs>